That announcement startled both mom and I. Mom had been painting a clean coat of white paint around the trim of my sister Patty's bedroom door. Disappearing beneath the paint was years of snot and dirty fingerprints. Months before, Patty had even printed her name, Pat, with a bright red pen on the woodwork, like a sign out in front of an exclusive establishment. It was a bold assertion of ownership and pride, which escaped our mother. And when it was discovered to be indelible ink, Patty received the punishment of her life, cleaning up dog poop in the backyard. Patty gagged. She even puked. It was hilarious. But we constantly warn you children about the trains, and you still defy us? It was the 60s. Our little village in northern rural New Hampshire was neatly cupped in the center of two mountain ranges. A junction of railroad tracks occupied a significant piece of the town. Trains chug through all day and night, carrying lumber and coal from Canada. I always found those trains slow and boring and longed to see trains carrying passengers with exciting destinations and Samsonite luggage. Rebecca, I asked you a question. When my mother's voice deepened to the point where she could be mistaken for James Earl Jones, you had better answer, and answer quick. I had to own up. After all, that mysteriously vague entity, Judy, had seen me. Yes. Yes what? Don't try to lie either, B. Patricia. My mother had nicknames for everybody. When she called you by your full name, you were either making her extremely proud, or you were in trouble, and she was not proud. Then, for a split second, and only a second, I caught a sly smirk on Patty's face. She quickly assumed the face of a concerned sister again, but I suddenly realized that she did not bring my crime to my mother's attention out of concern for my safety. Pat was a rat, and she had ratted me out. Yes, I took the shortcut that Ricky takes every day. I never got to say day, let alone plead my case because one of my mother's classic slaps sent white paint splattering all over the place and it stopped me in my tracks, no pun intended. Go to your room. My transistor radio had been seized as further punishment. After homework, boredom eventually overcame any fear of my mother's wrath. I quietly opened my door to gaze out into the hallway. The painting was done, and an aroma wafted up the staircase. Mom was cooking supper. I marveled at Patty's pristine doorway. Mom worked so hard but I wished with all my heart that the scarlet name was back up there so Patty could relive her worst punishment ever. Avocado green was different from the rest of the other colors. It separated itself tactfully. It was a bold and especially brave crayon, and so, Avocado Green made a run for it. Avocado Green refused to be captured or confined. I liked the little shaver's moxie. When it came to me, along with it came a plan.
the crime was committed, the evidence was planted, and I could finally go back into my room and only this time wait with the patience of Job. The Worst Punishment Part 2 took place just to strategize. Patty protested, and the more she protested, the worse it got for her. While Patty was gagging, puking, and cleaning, I secretly liberated the avocado green crayon from her pencil box. I let it roll happily all around my room, and then I let it lay loosely on my closet floor, amongst other traveling bits, because it not only needed to get away, but it got away and it deserved a place with the other traveling treasures like marbles and such. Avocado Green was mine, and rightfully so. After all, it chose me.